And so that particular data, you would also have to have this sort of data understanding. And then with the data that you have selected from the big pool of data, you're going to be preparing the data, you're going to be pre-processing the data. And the pre-processing the data would also include data handling of missing data and also to make it more uniform. And then so the next step would be the modeling process. So essentially this will be the model building process or the multivariate data analysis. So after you have built the predictive model or the classification model or the regression model, the next step is to evaluate the performance of the model. And if the performance is good, then you could proceed to the next step, which is to deploy. And also another important part about evaluating the model is not only based purely on the performance of the model, but also on the interpretability of the model as well. So model interpretation is a very crucial, important part of the CRISP DM or the data science lifecycle as well. Because if you cannot interpret the meaning that is hidden inside the model or the data, then the data science project is practically useless, right? Because, because if you cannot get any useful insight out of it, so what's the point of doing the data science project at the first place, right? So therefore, extracting insights and wisdom from the data is a very important core of the data science project. And so I've already described all of these six steps here, and so I'm going to skip it. All right, and so let's move on to the awesome framework. So in a 2010 post called a taxonomy of data science on the Dataist blog, Hillary Mason and Chris Wiggin introduced the awesome framework that essentially constitute a taxonomy of the general workflow that data scientists typically perform as shown in the diagram here. So shortly after in 2012, Davenport and Patil published their landmark article that we all know, Data Scientist, the Sexiest Job of the 21st Century in the Harvard Business Review that has attracted even more attention to the field of data science. And so the awesome framework essentially comprises of the five core here. And so the first is obtain data. And so the second is scrub the data, explore the data, model the data, and interpret the data or interpret the results. And so it's quite similar to the CRISP DM as mentioned above. And also, as I mentioned, it's essentially taking a different spin to the data science lifecycle. And so the obtain data phase here is rather straightforward. So you're going to be collecting the data. You're going to be scrubbing the data, meaning you're going to be pre-processing the data. And then in explore data, you're going to be performing some EDA or exploratory data analysis. And then afterwards, once you get a general idea or a high level overview of your data, you're going to be performing model building. And so for this phase, you're going to be applying machine learning algorithms or deep learning in order to make a prediction model. And then finally, once you've created your model and then you're going to optimize the model so that you get better performance. And so at the end of the day, the most important part of the model building process would be to interpret the model. And so here is the N coming from the interpret. All right, so conclusion in summary, we have gone through the data science process by showing you the highly simplified data science lifecycle. And then I've also covered about the CRISP DM and also the awesome framework. And so as you can see, the CRISP DM awesome framework are essentially containing the same core as mentioned in the data science lifecycle. And so in conclusion, it includes the obtaining of the data, data collection. And so in a nutshell, the data science lifecycle, Chris DM, and awesome framework essentially boils down to having some sort of domain expertise, understanding the business that you're working in or the domain that you're working in, selecting a particular area of your domain and representing it in form of a data of your interest. And then in that subset of data, you're going to be cleaning the data, making it into higher quality. And so this could be scrubbing the data, data munching, data pre-processing or data preparation. And then you're going to take that curated or cleaned data and perform a preliminary data analysis. And so this will be the exploratory data analysis or the EDA in order to allow you to gain a high level overview of the data. And so this EDA process will also help you to plan your data analysis strategy. 
And so the next step would be to employ the machine learning algorithm or deep learning algorithm in order to build a predictive model. And then finally, you're going to want to make sense of the data and also make sense of the prediction model. And so what do you do there? You have to interpret the meaning of the model by looking at the features that are contributing to the observed class labels that you're trying to predict or the values that you're trying to predict or calculate. And so after that, you're going to also employ some soft skill in order to convey or do some storytelling of the data or data storytelling in order to provide value, add value, and provide data-driven insights to the data problem that you're analyzing and also to provide knowledge and novel insight that will also help to drive the decision-making process in the organization that you're working in. And so I hope that this video was helpful to you. And so if you're finding value in this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't yet done so, hit on the notification bell in order to be notified of the next video. And as always, the best way to learn data science is to do data science. And please enjoy the journey. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you in the next one. But in the meantime, please check out these videos.